Hello, hello, it's Best Guy, and welcome to another episode of the trashiest show on Dropping Loads, Best Top 5. It's not the same quality as ODG or Wake Up! But, you know, it's an acceptable in-betweener. It's a Tuesday, you know, it's... I know it's, I know it's, it's gonna be a long week, but, you know, uh, I'm here to make it worse. But in order to make it a little bit better, here's a little bit of good news that you probably should be knowing by now. The Rock is one of the highest paid actors of all time. If you didn't know that, you probably were living under a Dwayne Johnson. That's one of the worst jokes I've ever told here. God forgive me. But no, he was the highest paid actor for a while, but as of 2018, he is now number two. Number one is George Clooney. For some reason, he's the highest paid actor now. But The Rock has made a lot of movies as of late. Uh, whenever he, I turn the TV on, I see The Rock. Whenever I go on Instagram, I see The Rock. Whenever I go outside to the backyard, I see rocks. Uh, I should keep off the jokes. But anyway, today we're, talk, we're talking about the top five movies starring Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Uh, he's made, he's a funny thing. He's a very charismatic guy. I think he's a good actor. He started off being uh, kind of wonky when he did um, The Mummy Returns. And you can say when he did The Mummy Returns, he was Dwayne the Plastic Johnson. Because they, they CGI'd the crap out of him and he looked way, way he, looked like, he looked like something from a PlayStation 2 game. But he has improved over the years. And I think a lot of the films that he does now, while they're not the most intelligent and they're not going to win any awards, most of them are passable entertainment because of how charismatic and funny and actually really good talent that The Rock has. Um, like I said, you can't escape without seeing him, his posters, his uh, commercials, and he's everywhere. And he had a recent movie now that I wanted to see only because it's so blatantly obvious that it's ripping off Die Hard. I think they even did a poster uh, acknowledging the fact that hey, we're not we're not idiots. We, we know that we're paying homage to that film. It actually seems more of a mixture of Die Hard and The Towering Inferno. So both of which were based on novels. I don't know if anybody knew that. And, and I don't know if you know this, but Die Hard originally wasn't going to be with uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, it was actually supposed to be, I think, Paul Newman at one point many many years back. But that's for a separate video. Um, the Rock has, just like I did for uh, for the Jason Statham video, uh, I'm going to be using films that he was not maybe the main character, but he stands out. So, but for number five, I have a film that, again, it's not very good. I know this is not a good movie, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, and I enjoy it. I, I watched this film a couple of times uh, throughout the year because of how silly and entertaining it is. And that is the Scorpion. So the Scorpion King was released after the success of The Mummy Returns. So they did a prequel taking place many, many, many years before even the first film, explaining the origins of the Scorpion King. And the movie's story is that he is um, destined to become a warrior, destined to become this king. And there's this uh, sorceress who is uh, being enslaved by this king, and he's using her to use her powers to conquer land and a whole bunch of crap and The Rock is there to free her. It's a very simplistic story. For a movie that was released in 2003, I believe, the, the, the film feels like something from the 90s, especially with the action and silliness. This is a movie that anybody can watch you know, with their kids. It's not, extra, it's not very violent. It's actually pretty uh, acceptable for, for most people. Uh, and it's actually pretty funny and The Rock has some really good lines. And he also does the famous, you know, eyebrow lift in one scene where he crashes into a palace and there's a bunch of women that surround him and he does a little wink and it's, it's, um, it's fun entertainment and he, again, he's very charismatic. That's what helps sell the film and most of his films. Um, so that's the, that's the Scorpion King. I watch it several times a year. It's not the most amazing movie, but it is very entertaining. So number four, number four, we have Walking Tall. Walking Tall was another film that he was released early in his career and it's actually a remake of a film starring Joe Don Baker and Walking Tall had several films in the franchise 
And I think the first one was with Joe Don Baker and the other, the other three were with another actor. But they all follow the same story of which uh, it's a guy protecting the small town and it's just a one guy versus an army in the small town. And the remake follows a very similar story to the original. Uh, only difference is it stars the, the Rock and there's a little bit more hand-to-hand -hand combat than the other one starring Joe Don Baker. And curious enough, after The Rock left this film, just like The Scorpion King, they did sequels not starring The Rock. For example, the one with, uh, with The Scorpion King, after that film was released, they did a prequel with a Filipino actor and then they did two, three sequels starring this guy named Victor Webster. And they did a pretty decent job in trying to make the guy look like The Rock. And, but, however, when it came to The Walking Tall sequels, they hired a guy from Hercules, Kevin Sorbo. And they're completely unrelated to the first one. It's just following a similar story, but kind of like a, a loose remake. But the first film, simple story, and you have Johnny Knoxville in this film. Curious thing, when you watch the film uh, The Last Stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which follows a similar premise of a man protecting his little small town, and you have Johnny Knoxville again in that film playing the same character that he's playing in Walking Tall. That's a little curious thing I, I noticed. A great little movie, not that amazing, but I enjoy it, and that's why it's here on this top five list. So for number three, we have uh, a movie that he did not star, he's not a star, but he has made this franchise so much better. Just like Jason Statham uh, made Furious 7 uh, a great film for how he was as a villain, The Rock plays a cool ass character of Hobbs in the film Fast Five, which was introduced for the first time as this agent who's trying to stop down the Toretto family, and he, he accepts no BS, he's straight to the point, there's a really cool action scene between him and Vin Diesel, and ever since he was introduced, the franchise has gotten so much better. I've enjoyed all the previous ones for what, for what they are, but after he was introduced, they've embraced their stupidity and taken it for, for what it is. Uh, dumb, you know, action movies, and they've embraced that. And The Rock's charisma shines through in Fast Five, and it does so in Fast Six and, F and Furious Seven, uh, and the, all the other ones that they're going to be making along with the spin-off called Hobbs and Shaw. So again, Fast Five, if you hadn't seen it, it was it takes place right after uh, Fast and Furious, which is the fourth one, and they're now in Rio de Janeiro, and the Torero family, which is trying to escape and uh, not being extradited, they don't know what The Rock is cooking. That's another really bad joke. But they don't know what The Rock is cooking, and The Rock is cooking up a scheme to trap them down and bring them back to the States and to pay for the crime that they did in the previous film. And it's just so crazy how you have, he's not really a villain, but he is there to stop him, you know, he's, tra he's, trying to, he's technically the good guy, and he's always almost one step ahead of them. And that's what makes this character so cool. So that is my number three. So number two is... Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. When I first saw the trailer for this film, I was like, this looks like absolute trash. It looks terrible, and it's, it's released by Sony, and Sony tends to, like, their films are hit and miss. Sometimes they're good, most of the time they're bad. Perfect example of bad, Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, but I ended up watching Jumanji, and I was surprised that it was a good movie, and it is a worthy sequel slash mini reboot of the original film with Robin Williams. And what I like about this movie is the fact that even though The Rock, The Rock is technically playing a teenage kid who's stuck in the body of a guy who looks like The Rock. And, it's, you know, people don't give him much credit, but The Rock is a very funny guy when he's in a comedy. Which I was going to put as an honorable mention, The Other Guys, where him and Samuel L. Jackson are probably the most hilarious thing about The Other Guys. Even though Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell are hilarious in the film, I think the duo of Sam Jackson and The Rock is hilarious. Especially that scene where they jump off the, the roof. It's so stupid, but it's fucking hilarious. And the same thing happens here in Welcome to the Jungle. Even though this is a more family-friendly film, he's pretty funny and it shines. It's like if you give him more comedies, I think he will do great. Sadly, the type of comedies that are giving him lately are not very good. Comedies like Central Intelligence and other ones like uh, Baywatch aren't very good. But if they find the right script and the right type of director and good people around him, I think he can always do well in comedies. 
He did really well on another comedy called Get Smart, and he wasn't really the centerpiece of that film, but it worked because he had a good story and good actors around him. He had other comedians who worked well with his rhythm, people like Steve Carell. So Jumanji is, again, um, a very simple story that follows kind of a similar route as the original, only this time it's a video game instead of a... Uh, a board game, yeah, they had to change it because of course most people nowadays don't play board games as much as they used to in the past, so most people play now video games. So it's understandable to do that. But what I like is that they give each of these characters good character development and they show their flaws and they actually create arcs for all of them, especially the character of The Rock. And you also have uh, Jack Black in the film and you have Kevin Hart, very very funny film, that is my number two. What is my number one? Number one is The Rundown. This is a movie that was released in the early 2000s and it stars The Rock along with Sean William Scott who you better, probably better know from the American Pie films. And if you're a younger millennial or someone who's much much younger probably doesn't even remember Sean William Scott. But he's really funny. Some people find him obnoxious but I find him really hilarious especially in those American Pie films. And he's also really funny here in The Rundown, even though he's pretty much playing a similar character to what he was playing in American Pie, he's still playing this kind of character that I can't stop watching and stop laughing at what he's doing. He really plays these zany, goofy characters who are kind of an asshole. And The Rock and him work really well because they're opposites of one another. And they're both in a jungle. And there's also the villain played by Christopher Walken. The Rock, what, what, what are you doing here? It's crazy. Insane movie. This is my terrible Christopher Walken impersonation. But anyway, uh, Christopher Walken does a good uh, job here too. He plays one of the villains. Uh, actually, the main villain of the, the story. And The Rock is stopping all this from happening. It's a good, fun time. The plot is very simplistic, but the action, along with everything that's happening around the comedy, works well for this film. So these are the top five movies starring The Rock, the Dwayne Johnson. I hope you enjoyed this list. If there's a movie from The Rock that I didn't mention, like G.I. Joe Retaliation, or Empire State, or I don't know what other film that he's done, or Hercules. Um, the thing with The Rock, his movies aren't that great, but he is the standout of those films. He's what makes those films more watchable. But anyway guys, make sure you smash that like button, share this with all your buddies, share with all the fans of The Rock, and make sure to subscribe, follow us on Instagram at Dropping Loads Productions. There's also a cool podcast from Dropping Loads where they upload a bunch of funny stuff. Um, and there's also Wake Up with Dorky. There's the ODG show. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff here. And I also have my own Instagram page under Vest Guy, where I post um, all the reviews when I'm not being lazy, along with um, reviews that I will be doing for movies on Fridays. Uh, just random movies that I watch and I'll just post up uh, reviews there along with book reviews are going to be coming up very soon under the name of the Seven Book Chronicles. But these are not going to be video reviews, it's going to be handwritten reviews where I can go fully in depth into the movies that I like. And they're going to be just movies like, you know, The Omen or uh, Rocky, a lot of films that I've seen before but just going in depth as to why I like them and why I will recommend them. And they're going to be on my Instagram page. Anyway guys, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave that all down below on the comment section. And until next time, bye.